The unknown bacteria that I had was Enterobacter aerogenes. This was unknown bacteria number five. E. aerogenes is a microorganism that can be found in various places, such as water, sewage, or the intestines of warm-blooded animals. It is a facultative anaerobic microbe. This means that it can survive in environments containing oxygen or lacking oxygen. It can cause various diseases in patients, such as urinary tract infections, respiratory infections, and meningitis. It is spread through contaminated catheters or cross-contamination in surgery. So it's very common in hospitals to see patients that have E. aerogenes. It is best grown at the temperature of 40 degrees Celsius, and doctors can prescribe various treatments to patients with E. aerogenes, such as cephalosporins or carbapenems. So a little bit about the appearance of this microbe. It is gram negative, and so it has a pink appearance underneath a microscope. It is a rod and bacillus shaped microbe, and it is a white, thick, abundant, and glistening colony that it forms. On the right here, you can see I have a list of every test that I performed on my microbe. Um, and so just a few of these tests that I ran that helped me identify which specific microbe I had, um, one of which would be a litmus milk test. This test, um, it had a, a change in the color of the broth to a pink appearance that indicated it had an acid production. Another um, test that I ran was a carbohydrate formation test. And this microbe, it had an acid and a gas production. And this is um, seen through the yellow color of the broth, um, that it changed that yellow appearance and the bubbles that formed in my test tube. And so it, it fermented carbohydrates in the presence of lactose, dextrose, and sucrose. Um, and so these were just a few of the tests that I ran. Um, some more of the tests that I performed was in petri dishes through differential and selective media. One kind of media that I used was the case and agar. And my bacteria had a negative test result. You can see because no clear halo formed around my bacteria. And so it did not utilize this enzyme protease. And so it did not undergo peptidization. I also performed the mannitol salt um, agar test, and this was a negative test result. It You can tell because no yellow zones appeared around my bacteria. And this um, media is really great for identifying staphylococcus bacteria. And so since I had a negative test result, it helped me narrow down that my bacteria was not staphylococcus. The phenylethyl alcohol agar was very beneficial in identifying my microbe. It inhibits gram-negative bacteria and is very abundant in gram-positive bacteria. And so because I had a very thin, small colony, I, I knew it confirmed that I had a gram-negative bacteria. So up to this point, my test results have matched the microbe E. coli and E. aerogenes. And so this eosin methylene blue agar was what just, it told me that I had E. aerogenes because it produced a thick mucoid pink colony. Now, E. coli would have produced a blue black colony with a green sheen. And so because I had this abundant pink colony, I knew it, that I had E. aerogenes, not E. coli. And it also inhibits gram positive bacteria and is very abundant in gram negative bacteria. And so I knew from the E and B agar that I definitely had E aerogenes. And I also knew this because my test results have lined up with E aerogenes. It's very important um, to perform these tests on unknown bacteria because you can determine what kind of diagnosis um, to give to a patient that has a disease. You can also determine what kind of treatments and antibiotics to give to a patient um, based off the disease that they have. And so these tests are really great um, to help scientists become more knowledgeable about what microorganisms um, that can be grown and in creating further medicines to treat more diseases to create more cures to those diseases.